Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending Kern Council of Government's 30th Annual Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. My name is Bob Smith, and I am your beloved Kern Cog Chairman for 2022. As you may know, in 2021, we postponed recognizing the exceptional work of our communities due to the pandemic, but that does not mean that everyone sat back and took the year off. Tonight, we honor several outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership, compassion, and dedication in making their local communities and the entire region of Kern County a better place to live and work. Our award recipients this evening prove that it only takes one individual or one organization to help make a significant difference in the community. They do this with programs that have the power to transform lives, such as the City of Bakersfield Be Cares program that develops small business grants to owner-operated local businesses struggling during the pandemic. Or the dedication and hard work we see from people like Ronald Pierce, who's committed to sharing the wonders and history of the Minterfield Air Museum is immeasurable. And the exceptional reporting of KGET TV's Alex Fisher and Robert Price in bringing some of the most difficult stories in front of our community so we understand how to best overcome our struggles. Fortunately, KernCog is not the only organization to recognize the important work performed by our award recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates of recognition from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, California Assembly Members Rudy Salas and Vince Fong, State Senators Shannon Groves and Melissa Hurtado, Congressman David Valadeo and Kevin McCarthy. Celsi Taylor with Assemblyman Rudy Salas and Jake Lopez are here to share Congressman Kevin McCarthy's. Warm regards as well as Kern County Board of Supervisors, David Couch and Zach Scrivener, both representatives of Kern Cog Board. David and Zach, somewhere? <laughs> St. Zach. As we are honored to have mayors and city council members from the cities of Bakersfield, Maricopa, Shafter, Tatchby, and Wasco here celebrating with us. Would all of those please stand? Mayor, city council members. Thank you. I would like to thank the hardworking individuals that make this program successful. You met Vanessa Enriquez and Mayan Lara with Providence Consulting when you checked in. They assisted with collecting reservations, managing mailings, and requesting legislative certificates. Current Council of Government staff who contributed to this event are Rochelle Envina, Jirasira, who assisted with registration, and Suzanne Campbell and Becky Napier helped organize the presentations you will see tonight. Without these members of our staff and the assistance of a consultant, this program would not happen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, ladies. I would also like to acknowledge the creative work of employees at Kern Government Television, most of them are back there in the back, who have helped us develop this year's presentation highlighting the programs and individuals being honored for their outstanding achievements. A special thank you goes to Tony Marino for serving as our professional photographer for tonight's event right down here. Thank you, Tony. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed next month on Kern Government TV. This gives us an opportunity to share the work of our honorees with all of Kern County. What really makes this event special is that our recipients can celebrate with friends and family. So thank you all for coming to provide your support to the honorees and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. We'd like to begin this year's celebration with recognizing some of the mentors, coworkers, and friends that we lost over these last couple of years. Although they're gone, the impact they made on our communities is everlasting.
There is no argument that the year of 2020 brought with it some real and unique challenges. The effects of the pandemic were felt worldwide by all walks of life. Our own local community faced its own challenges and pushed cities to think outside of the box for resolutions. The Be Cares program was developed by Bakersfield City staff in the fall of 2020 during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and epitomized the purpose of a regional award of merit where a local government provides an essential service to the community by delivering grants to businesses negatively impacted by the economic slowdowns indicative of the pandemic. In March 2020, the federal government approved the Corona Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, CARES, that included more than $150 billion in assistance through the Coronavirus Relief Fund. The city received $33.5 million in CRF funds that would be used to fund various programs to mitigate the negative impacts of the pandemic. In August of 2020, the City Council approved a plan to allocate $18 million of these CARES CRF funds to help different segments of the community. Included in that plan was an allocation of $3 million towards a small business assistance program, later named Be Cares. After extensive research of similar plans throughout the county, discussion with other municipalities and the County of Kern, Bakersfield City staff designed a program that would direct funds to those businesses with the greatest need. The Be Cares program established a number of qualifying criteria that was designed to first direct funds to businesses in need and to also ensure that the applicants were established businesses operating within the city of Bakersfield. Thanks to the diligent efforts of the Development Services Department, Code Enforcement Staff, and the Technology Services Department, the Be Cares program has been an incredible success. The city was able to provide much needed assistance to over 900 businesses in Bakersfield to help mitigate the negative impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. That was a great program. We congratulate the city of Bakersfield and their Be Cares program as the 30th Regional Award of Merit recipient for local government. Accepting the award for Be Cares is Rand McKeegan. Thank you very much to the current Council of Governments for recognizing this important program. We definitely saw a need as the closures of small businesses occurred during the pandemic. So we rolled out this program with the help, as it was mentioned in this, uh, this video, uh, uh, that we reached out to our technology services department, development services department. They re reviewed over 1,500 applications. Technology services rolled out an online application process that in, in a matter of weeks, actually, and so the next, over six months, we were able to hand out over 938 uh, grants to over, totaling over $5 million. So we're really pleased with that program. I also want to make a, a special recognition uh, to the program manager. We pulled her off the golf course, uh, came out of retirement, Melanie Dunwoody. She came in and really ran the program, took it to heart. Uh, working weekends over time to really get this program through the, across the finish line. So thank you very much and I really appreciate the recognition for this important program. If you look across our country, it's easy to find numerous government employees who go above and beyond in their responsibilities. This type of service is what makes our communities around us so grand. The small community of Maricopa is no different. Laura Robinson has been an essential part of this city for the last 15 years 
and has accepted any task, large or small, that is put in front of her. In 2007, Laura was one of 20 applicants applying for the office management position that had recently been vacated. She was offered the full-time position and has never looked back. When the city administrator resigned three years later, the city council appointed Laura as interim city administrator until the position could be filled. In July 2010, a turn of events landed seasoned city manager Eric Ziegler to the city of Maricopa and Laura became the assistant city administrator and she continues working under the skill and leadership of this seasoned man of cities. Fast forward the present time and Laura's commitment to this city is stronger than ever, serving the public and achieving greater things for Maricopa's residents. One of Laura's main goals was to give the children of Maricopa a place to hang out and be able to occupy their time without getting into trouble. The kids in Maricopa really had no place to go and nothing to do outside of school programs. Laura came across an opportunity to apply for a California State Parks grant to help create a place of recreation for Maricopa's kids. Although she had never written a grant before, Laura requested that she be given the opportunity and attended any grant workshops offered. She conducted many meetings with residents, the city administrator, and engineer, and together their application came together and was a success. 478 applications were submitted to the California State Parks and only 62 cities were awarded funds. Of those cities, the small community of Maricopa was awarded just over $1.9 million. All of this was possible due to Laura's determination and tenacity. For this, Maricopa is forever grateful to Laura Robinson. Please join us in congratulating Laura Robinson as the recipient of the 30th Regional Award for Local Government. Good job, Laura. I would just like to say that um, we have an amazing staff and I'm appreciative of Kern Cog for recognizing the city for um, this regional award. And if it wasn't for um, council members and city mayor, city administrator getting behind, it takes a team of us. There's only four of us in Maricopa, um, plus a couple workers outside. And so it takes everybody working together. And I'm just thankful that we have um, a team that works together that's united. And um, there's not a lot to do in Maricopa. My kids grew up there. Um, my grandkids have grown up there. And like we needed something for the kids and um, the community backed. So I'd say no dream is too small. You know, if you have something that you want to do for your community, get out there and do it because it can, it can happen and that's what happened for Maricopa and I'm really thankful. So thank you for this. <laughs> Ronald Pierce was born and raised in Shafter to parents Vernon and Addie Pierce. His parents owned Pierce Jewelry on Central Avenue. In the middle of World War II, Ronald's father Vernon closed the jewelry store and began working at the Minter Field Airport. Ronald has been a very successful businessman on his own, owning a long haul trucking company located in Shafter, transporting hazardous material for the military, and a rapid auto oil change company in Bakersfield. His passion for the airport rose from his father's commitment to it all through his life. Ronald has been very involved with community events throughout Shafter and was even a volunteer fireman for 10 years. He has participated and volunteered at the Kohler's Festival, the 3rd of July fireworks, Veterans Parade, the Christmas Parades, Santa Fly-In, Kern County Fair, and Shafter's 100th Centennial Celebration. The newest event of them all is the annual Wings and Wheels event at Minterfield Airport, which brings spectators, vendors, and participants from all over California. Year after year, Ronald has been at the forefront of organizing many events on behalf of the museum. He has also presented the history and aviation programs to the local elementary schools and Rotary and Kiwanis clubs. Why is this important, you might ask? Ronald will dedicate himself and his known resources to ensure the task is completed successfully no matter what it takes. Because of his attitude, Ronald has gained the respect and friendship of everyone he encounters. If it weren't for the relationships Ronald has built, Minterfield Air Museum would have a challenging time continuing to educate the community on the rich aviation history of Kern County and the southern San Joaquin Valley. 30th Regional Award of Merit for Community Involvement is presented to Ronald Pierce for his work with the Mentor Field Air Museum. Thank you. 
I want to take this time to thank uh, Kern. Cog. Huh? Cog. Cog. <laughs> Government award. I also want to thank the volunteers that have put on such hard work at Minter Field. Could you guys raise your hand? Some of the, we have some of the members over there. Raise your hand. I also want to thank my wife, Rosalie, of 64 years. For years of support. Rosa, you want to stand? <laughs> I I will probably I will probably spend the evening in the in the um, barn, but it's all worth it. I grew up with Mentor Field in my backyard in 1944 and 45. At the age of seven and eight, I visited visited Mentor Field. World War II with my dad. He worked out there at the, at the instrument shop. I've been a member of the museum for some 14 years. I want to invite everyone here to come out and visit Minter Field Air Museum, where over 11,000 cadets received their flight training their basic training at Mentor Field. Lots of them returned to Karen County and Bakersfield after the war to make their home. Like late Turk Iliadis went to flight school out there. We need volunteers. We need donations to keep the museum going. Come out and support Mentor Field. We're open Fridays and Saturdays, 10 to 2. Thank you. And I want to see some faces out there. <laughs> How much? For staff of the Kern County Child Support Services, service is more than a nice word to put on a wall. It is a call to action, and this spirit of service permeates throughout the office. This call to action drives this department staff to support employee-led initiatives supporting a vast area of community organizations. With a heart of service, this team works tirelessly to create unique ways to fundraise and bring awareness to important causes that impact the community. It is through teamwork, encouragement, and support from each other, these efforts endure and donations grow year after year. As a reminder, these are county employees with limited household budgets. The fundraising activities and donations come from the staff members themselves. There are no other donors and there are no funds available in the department budget. Careful thought and planning go into ensuring staff, regardless of their means, can participate and contribute to the success of the event. Each fundraising effort is truly a labor of love, which requires the staff member working with the organization to determine how best to support their cause, planning and organizing the fundraiser, encouraging fellow co-workers to help volunteer, messaging the supporting cause to their co-workers, and then executing the fundraiser all on their own time. Even a pandemic didn't stop this amazing group of people. This team understood that this past year it was even more important to support many community organizations who have been struggling, and those that would be impacted are those who need it the most. Putting their creativity in overdrive, staff redesigned fundraising events to be socially distanced and to include those working both at home and in the office. In 2021 alone, these county employees have supported nine community causes, raising over $10,000. Through the generosity of their time, energy, and donations, the impact of this group of people ripples throughout the community and beyond. KernCog congratulates the Kern County Child Support Services staff for their true commitment to the causes of our community. Accepting the Regional Award of Merit for the community involvement is Elizabeth Chavez. Thank you. Wrote it down so I wouldn't start crying and forget what I wanted to say. I would like to say thank you to the current Council of Governments for the Merit of Community Involvement Award. 
I accept this award on behalf of my team, who, as you can see, even in a pandemic, continue to find creative ways to support local charities aligned with our purpose to help families create a better life for their children. These funds were raised internally and not by outside solicitation, which I think is really important because we're a small department. There's only 200 team members, and with those 200 team members, we were able to support these organizations. Each year during Child Support Awareness Month, we host Ready, Set, Back to School Health and Wellness Fair. We have an amazing community partners who come alongside us to support this annual event, but the backpacks are due to the internal fundraising of our team members. Over our 12 years of hosting this event, we've provided over 36,000 backpacks to children of Kern County, which includes us traveling to outlying areas so that each hook on the classroom on the first year of school has a backpack. For those who do not know, our department is responsible for the establishment of parentage and orders for support, along with the collection and distribution of the support. In our federal fiscal year 2021, I am proud to state our team collected $98 million for over 60,000 children that in, our, in Kern County. We continue to seek out community partners to better serve our families. If you serve or employ parents who have barriers due to past due child support or parents who do not, do not know about our services, please connect with us. Together we can help them create a better life for their children. Thank you. A volunteer group known as Love Tehachapi formed three years ago in the city of Tehachapi with the purpose of beautifying and helping their neighborhoods. The volunteer group was formed through the Tehachapi Mountain Vineyard Church and quickly grew to include additional churches in the community. Love Tehachapi is led by Nicole Hamblin who reached out to the city of Tehachapi and Tehachapi Police Department to see what they could do to help make Tehachapi as beautiful as possible. They received list of properties, homeowners with medical disabilities, and properties owned by senior citizens who were having a hard time taking care of their properties. They removed bulky waste items, mowed lawns, trimmed overgrown shrubs and trees, and picked up litter in problem areas. The city of Tehachapi supported Love Tehachapi in their efforts by providing safety gear, vests, gloves, trash bags, and assisted with transporting debris. In a challenging year filled with constant adjustments on how we live, financial struggles for many, and the pain of losing loved ones to the pandemic, this volunteer group lifted the spirits of many who face those challenges by rolling up their sleeves and helping a neighbor. Nicole and her team of volunteers deserve recognition for their efforts and time invested into beautifying their community. We love Tehachapi. Accepting the Regional Award of Merit for Hashtag Love Tatchby is Nicole Hamblin from Mountain Vineyard Church. On behalf of the Love Tatchby community, I would like to say thank you for this nomination and award. Love Tatchby is a community of citizens, business owners, churches, and local city leadership. They're passionate about investing into the wonderful city of Tehachapi we call home. Since 2019, over 150 volunteers have been serving, loving on people, and spreading joy in their city. At events that are held multiple times a year, volunteers give of their time and their resources. From activities such as washing cars, serving meals, providing groceries, picking up trash, transforming yards, cleaning up neighborhoods, and also blessing children with new books. The volunteers love because they know they've been well loved. Love to Hatchby wants to be known for their love, their compassion, and their generosity. I would like to thank Tatchby Vineyard Church for their leadership, their commitment, and most of all, their support of Love to Hatchapi. We thank Kern Council of Governments for this honor. When 2020 ended, we thought of it as the year of death, mayhem, and unimaginable angst. 
we would later learn that it was the precursor to an even more disastrous year. KGET works every day to highlight and find solutions to the problems plaguing our community. Homicides, pedestrian fatalities, DUI crashes, homelessness, all problems they cover on a regular basis. But in 2021, our county was shrouded in death. Fentanyl and coronavirus were leading causes. Fentanyl is on the streets and getting into the hands of young people and killing them at an alarming rate. By November 1st, it had killed 137 people, all lives lost in an instant. Robert Price wanted to expose this killer and attempt to save lives. When KGET aired its five-part series on the county's ongoing epidemic of overdose deaths, fentanyl was largely unknown. Heartbroken family members were learning of its prevalence and astounding potency only after their loved ones were dead. KGT's series, Fentanyl, the Counterfeit Killer, pulled no punches in describing the scourge. Robert profiled five Bakersfield parents who had recently lost a young adult child, explained the drug's origin, its path into the United States, and the factors that made it so unusually deadly. Most importantly, they told family members how they could protect themselves. Another killer is on the loose in Kern and we're having a difficult time stopping it. More than 1,000 people lost their lives to the coronavirus this past year, nearly 60% of local deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. KGT's Alex Fisher wanted to understand how this pandemic took its toll on our county. He obtained every single death certificate issued in 2020. His story, called Kern's Deadliest Days, showed the progression of COVID-19 and how it moved across the county like an executioner preying on the most vulnerable. This story was backed up by public records, data, interviews from the top health officials in Kern County, and the stories from families who lost their loved ones to the virus. The public records Alec requested shows COVID-19 as the number one killer in Kern County during the first year of the pandemic. He shared these stories ahead of the third surge in an effort to dispute falsities of the virus and ultimately save lives. Kerncog congratulates KGET TV, Alex and Bob, for their excellent representation of critical news stories that affect our communities. Bob Price is accepting the award on behalf of KGET. Hello, Bob. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. Absolutely. Uh, about two years ago, I went over to the dark side. Uh, as many of you know, I was with a newspaper for a really long time, and uh, my uh, boss, Mike Trihe, told me it was not as horrible as I might think it was, so I uh, gave it a shot, and I found a, a a bunch of people who are very passionate and energetic and smart and do really good journalism. And uh, Alex Fisher is one of them. Um, uh, he's a little bit younger than I am, uh, but he uh, has a wealth of experience and uh, passion. He sits right next to me, and we tell each other every day how wonderful we are. And uh, anyway, um, Alex crunched these numbers, these uh, COVID numbers, every day and, and came up with stories uh, behind the numbers that I don't think anybody else was doing. Uh, he was uh, turning things over that uh, I don't think public health was even realizing what was happening. Uh, he just did a fantastic job. Um, as for fentanyl, you know, we, uh, we have the police scanner going in the, in the office all the time, and uh, it can kind of drive you crazy. But uh, we kept hearing, uh, you know, possible fentanyl overdose almost every day. Sometimes, multiple times a day, we would hear this on the police scanner. And, uh, uh, you know, I went to uh, uh, Mike and Erica, and I said, this is maybe something we ought to look into, something we ought to explore. And uh, as I am wont to do, I kind of went crazy on it. Um, but uh, we're now up to, I think, to beyond 250 people who have been, who've been killed, who've died, who've been poisoned by fentanyl in just the last couple of years. Uh, so uh, I think it's important to get the word out. We've had, uh, I've had a lot of people, parents, teachers, uh, even some younger people, um, mention uh, the fentanyl series that we put together last June. And uh, in many cases, they don't even know that it was uh, KGET. Uh, they just know that, um, that it's been on TV and it's something they should pay attention to. So I've kind of become a leading spokesman for Narcan, um, sadly, but you know, it's something that I think every office should probably have. Uh, I think people should go through their medicine cabinets and see what they don't need anymore. Um, uh, I talk to my kids about fentanyl, who I don't honestly don't believe are even remotely um, interested in that. But I've come across families that could say the same thing. So I would urge you all to talk to your, uh, uh, your loved ones, go through the medicine cabinet, and get yourself some Narcan in that cute little red and white box. Anyway, thank you.
Teamwork is the only way $5 billion of transportation projects can ever get delivered in Muhammad al Jaberi in Abhijit Bagdi with Caltrans Federal Programming Department epitomize teamwork at its fullest extent. This successful programming of projects over the last 21 years has enabled KernCog to manage and maximize the use of federal, state, and local funds on transportation projects and meet the project deliverables for the Federal Statewide Transportation Improvement Program, better known as FSTIP. Muhannad and Abhijit have worked diligently to help process state approval of Federal Transportation Improvement Program amendments that KernCog submits to help avoid any loss of funding. The last four state approval letters in 2020 were processed within a week or less. They have also worked diligently with developing effective strategies and cooperating with federal, state, and local agencies to prevent any deprogramming of billions of dollars in transportation at a time when every dollar allocated to transportation projects was difficult to come by. One of their largest tasks is coordinating the statewide meetings and workshops to include the latest available guidance in an open forum format while making sure all of the right players are invited to actively participate. Muhannad and Abhijit have always shared a common goal of improving the transportation system across the whole state of California, but Kern County is especially appreciative of the many times they have gone far above and beyond to research new opportunities to make the federal programming process easier to manage at the regional level. Please join me in congratulating the 30th Regional Award of Merit for Muhannad, Ajibi, and Abhijit Bogdal with Caltrans. When Caltrans turns something around in a week, we celebrate it. <laughs> uh, good evening. So Abhijit and I, we uh, tossed the coin that he supplied as to who's going to give the speech. <laughs> I should have checked that coin more uh, closely. So I ended up doing the speech. So it's a pleasure to be here. We're truly honored to be receiving this award. And I think uh, the, what, you know, the, the preview that was given about the federal programming process pretty much sums up what we do. The federal programming is a very, very complex pro uh, process and it's time sensitive because it involves billions of dollars. And we, uh, Abhijit and I work at the Division of uh, Transportation Programming, Caltrans. Uh, where we work with the 18 MPOs around the state and 21 uh, rural counties. This process, uh, because it involves so many dollars, almost $25 billion a year uh, statewide, it really requires a lot of coordination. And we've been very, very fortunate to work with the staff within uh, uh, current COG that worked with us and, and sometimes lent their expertise to help us improve our process and to make our process uh, very successful. I want to take this opportunity to thank our friends at Kern Cog, uh, Raquel Pacheco and Jos Tromalia for working with us for more than 20 years to make the programming process successful so that Kern Cog will use every single federal dollars that they get year after year. So we're very, very appreciative of this collaboration with Kern Cog staff, and uh, we really uh, are very, very fortunate to be able to work with such dedicated staff. Uh, thank you for Kern Cog for recognizing us and recognizing good work that's done uh, in this, for this county, for, uh, specifically for transportation. Uh, congratulations to Kern Cog for putting such a great uh, gathering an event and congratulations for all the award recipients. Um, we look forward to future uh, events where there's more success for this county, for this great county. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this recognition. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Kern Cog for our recognition and uh, I would say this is the award for the teamship that we have developed with Kern Cog over the last more than two decades. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it and I'm really honored to receive this award. Thank you.
In 2022, we are all focusing on the future of transportation and the development of autonomous vehicles and electric freight. But we cannot advance towards the future without remembering how we started. The history of our transportation throughout Kern County is also something to admire. And the Kern County Historical Society does an exceptional job preserving the unique culture and historical heritage of Kern County. Their most recent and highly important project was Historic US 99 not only locally, but also to the state of California. Beginning in 1991, many counties and cities in California have participated in various historic U.S. route projects. The projects were designed to commemorate the roadways that played an instrumental role in our local and statewide development that have since been retired, yet in commission during the most critical and historical times of the Western United States during the mid-1920s through the mid-1960s. From 1926 to 1963, U.S. Route 99 was the federal highway that linked Bakersfield to Los Angeles and the San Joaquin Valley. U.S. Route 99 was called California's Main Street Highway because it traveled through the heart of many towns and cities in our state. The highway brought a steady amount of business and tourism to those towns and cities allowing commerce to grow locally. When local businesses prosper from tourism, so do our local communities. Local tourism has also helped to create jobs in the communities and districts where historic routes are known to pass through in our state. For example, Route 6, Route 101, Route 66, and Route 99. As a result of great work and collaboration by the Kern County Historical Society with local and state traffic engineers, a total of 20 historic U.S. Route 99 signs have been installed throughout Bakersfield and unincorporated parts of Kern County. Congratulations to the Kern County Historical Society as one of our 30th Regional Award of Merit transportation recipients. Accepting this award is Fatima Budgeron, Executive Director of the Historical Society. So, good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the Kern Council of Governments for the Regional Award of Merit for Transportation for the Historic U.S. Route 99 Project. I would also like to thank the many individuals and organizations who helped with the project, who are the Kern County Historical Society and their members, including current President Mike Warner, the Bakersfield Historic Preservation Commission, Harrison Scott and Michael Ballard of the Ridge Route Preservation Organization, and the traffic engineers with the city of Bakersfield, the county of Kern, and Caltrans. But most importantly, I would like to thank Stephen Montgomery, vice chair for the Bakersfield Historic Preservation Commission, and Ken Hooper, archiving teacher at Bakersfield High School and former president of the Kern County Historical Society, for allowing me, to, for allowing me the opportunity to work with them on such an important and meaningful project. These um, two individuals uh, were always there to provide support and assistance with ideas and different approaches to obtain the necessary information we needed to make this project an absolute success. I look forward to many more historic mm. preservation projects for our county and city to enjoy. Thank you, everyone. Again, thank you, Kern Council of Governments, for this award. Public safety on our roadways, especially when talking about pedestrians and bicyclists, is critical and something Kern County Public Works gives a great deal of attention to. Under the direction of Public Works Director Craig Pope, the department understood the value of making the roads in some of our disadvantaged communities safer for all forms of transportation. And they really outdid themselves with the Boron Desert Lake pedestrian path funded by active transportation program funds with a project cost of just over $2.5 million. The primary goal of this project was to connect the residents of the disadvantaged communities of Boron and Desert Lake to each other, schools, local businesses, and public services. The project area occurred along 20 Mule Team Road, Boron Avenue, Del Oro Street, John Street, and Boron Park. 
Approximately one and a half miles consist of a multi-use path and another mile of sidewalks connects Desert Lake to Boron and other community destinations. Pedestrian crossings with safety features were also constructed over two dangerous, heavily used railroad crossings, the first of its kind in Kern County. This project removes the children, students, and pedestrians from the street and provides a safe and continuous path to community destinations. Although there are many more projects like this that need to be developed, Kern County's Public Works Department has created a phenomenal template for all communities to emulate to help keep our residents safe. Please join us in congratulating Kern County Public Works as the recipient of the Richard A. Maxwell Award for Public Safety, accepting this award for the department is Yolanda Alcantara. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank Kern Cog for this award, and I'm accepting it on um, behalf of our wonderful Public Works Director, Craig Pope, and our Assistant Directors, uh, Lynn Brooks and Sam Lux, who were par vital to various parts of this uh, project. Um, it's a sad occasion that brings us together. Train deaths are always tragic, but even more so when children are involved, and that was what was involved in this project. It was Supervisor Scrivener who came to us and said, we, we've got to do something for this vulnerable community. Uh, it's, there's a double railroad track that splits this community. Uh, Desert Lakes is two miles from Boron, and the schools are split between the communities. Um, so we knew we had to get something done for this community. Um, but it was no easy project. In fact, it almost didn't happen because Caltrans headquarters uh, called us up and said uh, they were really concerned about this project. They didn't think we could deliver it within the time frame and within the budget, and they actually wanted to remove the railroad portion, which was the heart of this project for us. Um, so it was an uphill battle the whole way, and, and I hate to admit that they were right. You know, we didn't get it done on within our time frame, it was way over budget. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> um, but, but it was important, and it laid the foundation for what we wanted to do next, and that's to target other railroad crossings to make safer pedestrian access. Um, but in spite of all these difficulties, we got it done because we have such wonderful public work staff that really rallied together to make this happen, from the planners to the engineers, admin staff. It really took a whole team to get it done. And so thank you very much for this honor. Golden Empire Transit recently acquired its first five hydrogen fuel cell buses. Git is excited about the addition of the hydrogen buses and the benefits they will bring to the Bakersfield and Kern County environment. This acquisition aligns with the implementation of Git's zero emission bus plan and their compliance with the California Air Resources Board innovative clean transit regulations by the purchase and use of vehicles fueled by alternative fuels with the lowest possible emissions. These regulations require transit agencies to transition to a zero emission bus fleet by 2040. The transportation sector is responsible for about 40% of greenhouse gas emissions, 80% of nitrogen oxide emissions, and 90% of diesel particulate matter emissions in California. Unlike buses that run on fossil fuels, a hydrogen fuel cell electric bus is powered by two of Earth's most common basic elements, oxygen and hydrogen. A fuel cell combines hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity, heat, and water. Fuel cells are similar to batteries in that both convert the energy produced by a chemical reaction into usable electric power. However, the fuel cell provides an advantage. It will continue to produce electricity as long as fuel in this case hydrogen, is supplied. When a hydrogen fuel cell electric bus operates, it emits only water vapor. This means cleaner air, less global warming, and healthier, quieter neighborhoods. Along with the purchase of the hydrogen buses, Git is installing a temporary hydrogen fueling station to service the five buses they currently have on site. This will be the first hydrogen fueling station in Kern County. Git is excited to have this opportunity to return the investment that the citizens of Bakersfield and Kern County have made by providing a cleaner environment and a healthier future.
Kerncog congratulates GetBus for their commitment toward reducing transportation's carbon footprint. Accepting the award is Golden Empire Transit District's Director of Maintenance, Chris James. Staff told me I better write it down or I'm going to forget when I get up here. So. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for the, the acknowledgement of our recent accomplishment. Um, just like to make a quick comment about the video. Our temporary fueling station is in place and we're operating the buses, so we're real happy about that. Um, we really didn't have plans to transition to zero emissions so early, but with the CARB mandate, it kind of accelerated our transition plans. Um, it's amazing what you can do when you're mandated to do something. <laughs> the, so the CARB, as I mentioned in the video, the CARB mandate requires us to go to zero emissions by 2040. Um, the hydrogen fuel cell buses was our um, first purchase towards our emission goals. Um, so uh, we're early adopters of this field, of the fuel cell technology. Um, we're receiving a lot of attention for that, <laughs> uh, especially amongst the public transit agencies. And uh, you know, we're pretty much putting Bakersfield on the map right now. There are very few uh, transit agencies that are running these buses right now. Um, so I'm, ha I'm proud to say that we, you know, we deployed five buses in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, we're, we're committed to this technology. We're making a substantial uh, investment in a permanent hydrogen station, refueling station. And uh, we currently have five more buses on order along with 16 uh, battery electric paratransit vehicles. Everything's to arrive this summer. The fuel station will be up and running this summer as well. Um, by the elimination of the emissions uh, in these vehicles, um, it doesn't, it not only benefits our customers, but it also benefits our community and most of all, the, our planet. Um, the transition plan to these vehicles would not be possible without funding, support, and good leadership I would like to thank the, our board of directors for their support. They've been instrumental in this. Uh, Karen King, our CEO, for her great leadership. Um, and most of all, the, the, uh, the support staff at Golden Empire Transit that's making this transition possible. Thank you again for the recognition. We appreciate it. If we want to get people out of their cars, we need a beautiful and welcoming site with cooling shade, lighting, and safety enhancements. While sidewalks, crosswalks, tree plantings, street lights, and bike lanes are not new, the city of Bakersfield wanted to try some time-tested techniques and innovative concepts in the project design and construction of a true urban green space. And that's exactly what they accomplished with the Kentucky Street Urban Greening Project. They successfully combined these designs with newer elements like Bakersfield's first cycle track and a bios well to elegantly meet the objectives of mobility, safety, and environmental health while adding beauty too. Overall, the project could be best described as a refinement of existing techniques combined with newer concepts to solve challenges in an innovative way. Careful thought, analysts, and input came from many stakeholders to make this project successful. Thinking outside the box led to innovation. Solar lighting and a solar powered irrigation controller illuminate and irrigate the site, thus eliminating the need for an electric meter, electric consumption, or a monthly electric bill. All the trees and shrubs are rated as low or very low water use and are irrigated with a highly efficient point source system which reduces weeds, conserves water, and reduces irrigation costs. A bios well collects runoff from the new sidewalk in Kentucky Street, providing supplemental water to the trees and shrubs, thereby reducing the site's total irrigation demand. The diverse plant palette is well suited to this site, providing cooling shade for cyclists and pedestrians, and food and nesting space for birds and pollinators. Once a dilapidated site between the south side of Kentucky Street and the Union Pacific Railroad, with broken sidewalks, weeds, and debris, now has been transformed into a vital community asset for school children, pedestrians, and cyclists, and now displays a sense of community, opportunity, and hope. 
Congratulations to the City of Bakersfield as a recipient of the Ken Volpe Award of Merit for Environmental Resources and Conservation. Accepting this award, Navdeep Grewal and Stuart Patterson. Right on, where's Navdeep? Thank you, Bob. And thanks to Kern Cog, of course, for this award. Um, very proud and honored to accept it on behalf of the city. Um, but I really need to recognize the folks that I feel made this happen. Um, Navdeep Graywall is here with us tonight. Raise your hand, Navdeep. Um, <laughs> Navdeep is the head of our design engineering uh, division at, at the city of Bakersfield. And he put together a team at the beginning and saw this through concept, through design, through implementation a team of engineers, uh, in-house landscape architect, technicians, and we did it ourselves. We, we did not use a consultant, and, and as you saw in the video, this had some very unique features, some firsts, uh, first cycle track in Bakersfield, um, which, <laughs> and I think Cindy rides it, too, um, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's a protected two-way uh, bike path built in the roadway. Um, and uh, it's the first one. We had 28 solar-powered streetlights, um, as mentioned, um, and a solar-powered irrigation timer, so we're completely off the grid. Uh, a bioswell that helps the landscaping uh, be irrigated with very little um, irrigation. Um, I believe the calculations over 40 years uh, removes 900,000 pounds of CO2. So it's a very sustainable project, which when I was in college over 35 years ago. Sustainability wasn't even in our vocabulary. Uh, engineers and planners didn't, didn't even use that term. And now we try to use those features and elements in, in any project that we can. So the bottom line, I think, is it's a healthier Bakersfield for everybody. So thank you very much for the award. <laughs> What could be more innovative than converting an old chemical plant on the north side of town to a non-toxic and all-natural mineral plant for agriculture? That is exactly what Jerry Tyler did in the development of the Heart for Nature. The Heart for Nature uses an innovative process that blends naturally mined minerals with tree sap, producing an organic USDA-approved soil additive that makes field application dust-free while making better food products and maximizing production. Zero animal or other waste is used in this product. This process helps improve the environment in Kern County and various other locations where their product is applied. The Heart of Nature facility is used to transload their natural minerals to be reshipped and applied into animal waste at dairies and poultry farms. Application of the product directly applied to the waste byproduct has proven to reduce odors, emissions, pathogens such as E. coli and salmonella, as well as ammonia that would otherwise pollute our California air and the indoor environment in poultry houses and confined animal operations. Jerry has been recognized for his exporting of this technology into multiple countries by the U.S. Department of Commerce, resulting in recognition of merit awards from both parties in Congress. Subsequently, he was appointed by U.S. Commerce Secretary Penny Pitzker to the Southern California District Export Council under Obama, then again appointed by U.S. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross under the Trump administration to the newly formed Central California District Export Council. He was also very instrumental in the formation of the Central California District Export Council, which was established in 2018. Jerry and his team at Heart for Nature are doing something that no one else is doing in Kern County and globally, changing one farming operation after another. Congratulations, Jerry Tyler was unable to be with us tonight, so we congratulate him and we'll make sure he receives his award. When the pandemic hit us in 2020, people across the nation were sheltering down, which meant conducting everyday tasks was a challenge. Tasks such as shopping, food, pharmaceuticals, and other tasks were having to be managed differently. Large retailers and chain restaurants were able to utilize delivery and online services to assist in continuing business. But the local, small business vendors were facing the challenges of how to keep their doors open. 
That's what inspired Venue Dash Incorporated to be established in Bakersfield, California with the purpose of serving small local businesses. Venue Dash Incorporated is a mobile application similar to Uber Eats, but for non-food related products such as home goods. With Venue Dash, you can have products brought to your home within 30 minutes or less. Users would be able to download the application from the Apple and or Google App Store where they could interact as a business, interact as a customer, or interact as a delivery driver. Just with a swipe of a screen and a click of a button, a consumer can have a brand new pair of shoes from one of our small local businesses delivered to their front door. This concept was a great way to support the small businesses and boost the local economy when business growth was facing its biggest challenges. Venue Dash is assisted with the discovery of new stores and the introduction of new products and services in the local community. Currently, there is nothing of its kind anywhere in the United States. Venue Dash helps not just businesses, but consumers as well. Such a wonderful concept developed and tested here locally with plans to grow internationally. Tim Cox congratulates Venue Dash as a recipient of the 30th Regional Award of Merit for Innovation. Accepting this award will be Melvin Harris, CEO of Venue Dash Inc. Thank you. I would like to first of all thank uh, the current County of Governments, of course, for the recognition for this award. Um, I also would like to take time to say thank you for my friends and family that did come, uh, for as well as my acquaintances from my engineers out in France to my engineers in Florida for all my partnerships, all my contractors here as well. Um, Vineyard Dash, of course, is the future going forward for shopping. Um, from incorporating local businesses we have contracts with here in Kern County as a peak and as a start for the incorporation here. Um, from spreading from city to city, state to state, all the way through the um, United States. So I do want to say thank you. Of course, thank you for the uh, recognition and yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> With more than 170 miles of bike trails, lanes, and paths throughout our county, how do you encourage residents to get out and experience these trails when bike and pedestrian safety is a major concern in our communities? Kern County Public Works wanted to encourage residents to get out and enjoy these active transportation opportunities and worked closely with local bicycle advocacy nonprofit Bike Bakersfield to create a fun and educational bicycling activity that would be easy for new and seasoned riders to enjoy. Public Works and Bike Bakersfield put their heads together and created the Bike Kern County Scavenger Hunt. This virtual scavenger hunt invited participants to use active transportation to explore their neighborhoods in county city areas while searching for tasks and assignments to complete on their mobile devices. Over 50 local participants downloaded the scavenger app and followed challenges involved in identifying different bicycle pavement markings and snapping a photo, checking in at different GPS coordinates, scanning QR codes, and answering bicycle safety questions. Furthermore, bicycle prizes were awarded to those who completed the task and challenges on the scavenger hunt. The project was accomplished using Transportation Development Act funding. Initially, the two organizations wanted to provide in-person bike rodeos and bike pedestrian educational outreach, but the pandemic made this difficult to accomplish. By making this a virtual event using the participant's smartphone and logging various key points throughout the county, Public Works and Bike Bakersfield were able to achieve their goal of providing education in a fun and creative way. Combining a physical bike ride with the element of a bike safety virtual scavenger hunt was the first of its kind in our community. This project not only captured a significant number of adult participants, but also became a wonderful family activity as well. Please join us in congratulating Kern County Public Works and Bike Bakersfield as the recipient of a Regional Award of Merit for Innovation. Accepting this award will be Alexa Koloski and Asha Chandy. Hi, I'm Alexa with Kern County. I'd just like to say thank you for Kern Cog, um, not only for the award, but for the TDA grant money. And thank you also to California City, Taft, and Shafter for donating their TDA grant money to allow us to implement this program. Thank you, Kern Cog, for letting us uh, be the guinea pig and try this virtual test out. It, it turned out great, in my opinion. 
And I would definitely like to thank our director, Craig Pope, and our assistant director, Sam Lux, for playing along and letting us do all of these fun things with the money. And thank you, Asha, with Bike Bakersfield. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without your help. We did hundreds of hours of challenges and curriculum. And I would also like to thank Chris Carrillo, my staff member. It wouldn't have been possible without you. Thank you. Just wanted to be really quick. Thank you to Alexa, County Public Works, for just playing along, being a part of this. Um, thank you especially to Snyder's, who gave us a $500 gift card as a grand prize. Um, I have to say, our the person who won is an Army veteran. He did 98% of the challenges, which means he went from Taft to California City, I believe. Um, and he and his wife completed that. So thank you to Snyder's as well. Leadership is a skill that comes naturally to Karen King, CEO of Golden Empire Transit. Karen has spent much of her adult life in the public transportation industry, coming to Bakersfield in 2008 from North County Transit District in San Diego, where Karen was the chief executive officer. Her skills, initiative, tenacity, and political insight led the North County Transit District through a critical time. Under her leadership, the agency brought its light rail transit system from a concept through planning, design, construction, and service implementation. Her accomplishments at Golden Empire Transit have been just as remarkable. As an innovator intent on meeting the transportation needs of the citizens of Bakersfield, Karen has introduced and implemented the on-demand microtransit service with a pilot program in the southwest side of Bakersfield. This pilot program now extends to downtown and portions of the east side with continued plans for expansion. Under her direction, GIT implemented a non-emergency medical transport, NIMT service, contracting with Kern Health Systems to provide rides to and from medical appointments to the more than 300,000 members of Kern Family Healthcare. GIT recently purchased software to help co-mingle the vehicles for the three on-demand services, including on-demand microtransit, on-demand paratransit, and on-demand non-emergency transit, so any vehicle can pick up a rider from any of these three services. This new software and the co-mingling will increase efficiency and reduce wait time for GIT riders. This past 20 months has been unprecedented and has tested the leadership of most organizations. The pandemic hit public transit with severe reductions in ridership and GIT was not immune to this revenue disruption. Karen was able to navigate and lead in an exceedingly dynamic environment as information was changing daily. GIT is one of our community's most valuable resources and a key component in its growth and future development and they are stronger and better thanks to Karen King's leadership. Karen Cog congratulates Karen King as a recipient of the Daryl Hildebrand Distinguished Leadership Award. Congratulations, Karen. Certainly. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I did make a few notes, uh, not because I'm going to give a lot of comments, but because those of you that know me know that I can be quite verbose and ramble on for a long time, and the evening is getting long. First, I want to thank the Kern Council of Governments, um, Bob Smith, his council members, and the staff of Kern Cog for this recognition. It means a lot to me to be part of this community. As the video said, I've only lived here 14 years, and uh, it's quite an honor to be recognized as a leader. And it's especially meaningful to me to have this be in the name of Daryl Hildebrand. Many of you knew Daryl, and while I didn't get a chance to know him for very long, he's one of the very first people in Bakersfield to extend his hand to me and welcome me to this wonderful community. And Daryl and I kind of clicked because he spoke my language. He spoke grants. 
He knew how to get money, and he knew how to make you stretch it as far as you possibly could. So uh, I'm pleased to accept this in Daryl's memory. And then also, it's meaningful to me because you're all transportation professionals. And sometimes I feel like people take transportation for granted. So it's particularly meaningful, this coming from people who know how to have a vision, how to work towards that vision over many, 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 many years to see it come to fruition. Um, I, I am actually pleased nobody's really brought up the pandemic, and I'm going to wrap this up real quickly, but... Uh, before the pandemic, GET was looking at ways to better serve our community. During the pandemic, we had to reduce our service, but it didn't reduce our enthusiasm for what we do. And we have worked on bringing new products to the community, and post-pandemic, we're going to be even more relevant to this community than we have been in the past. And for that... I want to thank our board members, Board Chair Cindy Parra, Carlos Bayo, Lisa Ingle, for their vision and their leadership in the community. I want to thank my wonderful staff at Table 8, who does all the hard work. And lastly, I just want to thank my husband, who's here tonight, because uh, after 42 years, he's still cheering me on. He's my biggest cheerleader. I love you all. Thank you very much, Kern Cobb. The importance of strong leadership is not to be left unnoticed. That is why Kern Cog is proud to recognize David Warner with the Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award. Dave exists to serve others. His compassion and desire to be the voice for the underserved is evident in each and every community he has served in the last 39 years. Dave's vision was contagious, and he shared his knowledge with anyone who could benefit. His largest commitment has been to bring safe drinking water, sewer facilities, installation of main lines, or needed system repairs to the communities that need this the most. He listened to board members, communities, and individuals about their needs and looked at opportunities on how to best serve them. If necessary, Dave would walk the streets going door to door, making sure information was presented and participation welcome. Dave understood to serve these communities, he couldn't be by the clock, but he would have to serve them by the need and he made sure he was always available. He helped develop other leaders within each community to make sure the project was successful going forward. Every community project was intended to have lasting results and improve the residents' quality of life. His projects were never over, just operational. The people he met along the way became friends worthy of continued visits and calls to make sure everything was going well. Dave has touched and changed the lives of thousands because of his caring and heartfelt devotion. He is definitely a leader others should emulate. Congratulations, Dave Warner is recipient of Ronald E. Brummett Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you folks, Kern Cog, for this award. I really appreciate it. And just a word of clarification, I did walk the streets, but in a proper manner. <laughs> So uh, the, the one thing I do want to say is that, um, well, many things, is that I wouldn't be able to be doing this if I hadn't come out here as a volunteer working for an organization called Self Up Enterprises. And that organization allowed us to get out there and with training from Bard McAllister, the founder, and also Paul Boyer, who retired uh, six months ahead of me but had worked many years more than I had. Um, and their goal was get out in the community, meet the people. They will tell you what they need. Don't go there with answers for them. They'll give you what they need. And that has been, I've been lucky to work under that tuition and get out there in the community and work with people. And 
I feel embarrassed to receive this award because it's those people in, in the community. It's the people on the water boards, the city councils, the people that form their own committees to get things done in their community. Um, those are the people that made these projects possible. Um, it's not Dave Warner is out there. It's those folks are out there. I worked, I had the pleasure of working with those people um, in the mountains, the valley, and the deserts. And there's so many different communities here in Kern County that are just great, full of history. Everybody wants to know where you're from. You want to know where they're from. And it's just been a great 41 plus years of working in Kern County. I've also had the fortune of uh, meeting my wife in Delano, and uh, we've been married for many years, and she's allowed me to go out in those communities, but she reminded me that I have to get home sometime. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I do want to make the point that it's the folks in those communities that make these projects work. It's better to have them have the project down and go to their county supervisor and say, this is what we need, instead of going to the county supervisor or the state and saying, help us. And then they don't have a clue on how to make it work for them. Um, that's our organization has a, is a great organization that it's focused on helping the community be the lead as um, developing these projects. And I thank Kern Cog for this award and it's been a, a great time. And uh, get out there, Kern County, it's a great place. Thank you. A January 2019 homeless count in the city of Bakersfield found 643 unsheltered individuals, a 108% increase over the previous year. In response, a group of city staff explored the possibility of establishing Bakersfield's first city-run emergency homeless shelter. After extensive research, multiple city council workshops dedicated to the matter, and a series of community meetings, the Bakersfield City Council authorized the purchase of a 70,000 square foot office and warehouse complex located at 1900 East Brundage Lane for the establishment of the 150 bed Brundage Lane Navigation Center, otherwise known as the BLNC. The BLNC is large enough to house the Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaborative a city and county funded organization that manages the regional response to homelessness and coordinates applications to state and federal dollars to address the crisis. On October 26, 2020, the city of Bakersfield opened a state-of-the-art homeless shelter that incorporates best practices in homeless services while bringing together multiple community partners to help unsheltered individuals get the help they need. Within three months of opening, the Brundage Lane Navigation Center has become home to over 100 homeless residents, and as of January 31st, 2021, 15 people have already been placed in permanent housing. A major component of the shelter has been community partnerships. The City of Bakersfield partnered with Kern Medical, Kern County Department of Behavioral Health and Recovery Services, and the Department of Human Services to provide complete wraparound services to the 150 residents of the BLNC to get them back on their feet and into permanent housing. The city added three teams to Flood Ministries who have been the largest component of the referral network into the BLNC. BLNC shelter operator, nonprofit Mercy House was brought to the city of Bakersfield due to their successful model used in a dozen cities throughout Southern California and Arizona. In building and operating the Brundage Lane Navigation Center, the city of Bakersfield is proud of what is already being called a model shelter for the region, state, and the entire nation. That is a great project. I just wanted to say that, you know, that mentioned that 15 people had moved into permanent housing. I think that number now is closer to 115 because it's been another year, and that's success. Kern Cog's honored to present the Chairman's Award of Regional Cooperation to the city of Bakersfield and the Brundage Lane Navigation Center accepting this award is Bakersfield Mayor Karen Go. Thank you so much, Kern Council of Government. We really appreciate it. We are our brother's keeper. We are our brother's keeper. And we heard the word community mentioned many times this evening. And it is because of 
community. It's because of your investment that the city of Bakersfield has been able to create over 500 beds for our community. 119 individuals have moved from the streets, have moved from the riverbed to permanent housing. And tonight, because of your investment, 145 people have a place to sleep, have showers, have food. Thank you so much to our community. I want to especially thank our Bakersfield City team, City Manager's Office, Public Works, the Economic and Community Development Group, Development Services, Code Enforcement, and our provider, our service provider, Mercy House. But we also have two special people to thank who aren't part of the team any longer, but it's their investment that has made a huge difference. Former city assistant, city manager, Jackie Kitchen. Thank you, Jackie. And former director of public works, Nick Fiddler. Their tenacity in getting things done in a very short time have changed the future of individuals. So thank you so much, city team. I guess we ought to thank the city council too for voting. And to all of you taxpayers, thank you so much. Your investment indeed is changing the future of individuals and families forever. And since I'm the last person, congratulations to all of you. You know, we heard on one of the videos, even the pandemic could not stop. Even the pandemic could not stop all of your contributions. So thank you so much. Kern Cog, thank you very much. God bless you all. That brings us to the end of our program. Please join me in one last round of applause to our recipients. And if you want more photos, Mr. Tony Marino is going to be down here. Thank you so much for coming. And get on your bikes and ride or drive <laughs> home safely. Thank you.